Maybe you've already prayed to receive Christ, but you've not been obedient to follow the Lord in baptism since you have, in fact, been saved. Not based on the baptism that you had as an infant or uh, when you went to Bible school and you didn't really understand what was going on, but you've now given your heart and life to Jesus. And, and you know you need to follow the Lord publicly in baptism. It's not going to save you, but it's a public declaration of the fact that yes, I'm following. Or maybe God is calling you to be a part of this church family. Maybe God's calling you to full-time Christian service, to, to minister. Whatever it might be. Maybe some victory that you need over a besetting sin in your life. Whatever it is, we're going to have a time of invitation. We're going to pray. We're going to invite you to come and deal with these very important issues or whatever else God has placed on your heart. Would you pray with us? Heavenly Father, thank you for being so clear in your word and help us as we go through this week to be looking forward to uh, seeing and learning some more about those truths uh, as we study our own scripture and also as we come to the Bible Prophecy Conference. Lord, that for that person who is today, has been here today and they're saying, you know, I know what that guy said is right. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you lived a perfect life. I believe that you want to save me, that you carried my sin to the cross. And your blood was poured out that my sin could be washed away. And your righteousness might be imputed, given to me. And I'm going to trust your salvation and not anything that I can do to save you. Please, Jesus, I receive you. Come into my life. I'm going to trust in you and you alone to save me and to change me. Lord, I pray that you would be with that person, that you would help them to know. Now that you've done that work, they should be excited and rejoicing and very open and public about what the mighty God of this universe has done to save me. They would follow you in baptism. Father, whatever else, whatever word you want to do, help us to know that you love us, that whatever you want for us is good, it's best, better than anything that we are allowing to hold us back. Help us to throw down the walls today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to stand. I'm going to be here. If you have a decision that you made in public, you need to meet me here. Let's stand.
time is now for giving a few papers. Be seated, the ushers, please come forward uh, for this morning's conference. You remember this next week coming up? Of course, this week you're coming up is the Bible Prophecy Conference. And we're starting at, uh, at 6 o'clock on Friday, so you remember that this week. And also invite as many people as you can to that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. This time that we have to come and worship you in this facility. We thank you for the opportunity we have to give. Uh, give to this church and to its responsibilities and to its ministry and to, in this world, Lord. And also, as we're giving also to uh, uh, other causes such as the Annie Armstrong Easter Offer, we pray for um, ministry in North America. As the, we see church planting, as we see church restoration, as we see uh, various ministries going on, uh, Father, we, uh, we thank you for uh, for all, all that you do in these areas and for the way that you save. Father, we know that this is what we've been talking about today, that there is no other name given among heaven whereby men may be saved. It is only the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is a video for the uh, Any Armstrong Instructor. It's the last place he thought he'd ever go. I did him uh, for order. The last place on my mind was to move back to my home in Detroit. And it's the last job he thought he'd ever had. I was born uh, with a hearing loss, and I was an 80% loss. Every now and then, I get the, uh, the voice in my head that I can't do this. Good job, good job, good job. Back a few years ago, Scott Blanchard moved back to his hometown and started doing whatever it took to meet people. I thought it was good that God uh, pushed me in that direction to start a church. And what better place to start a church than the place he knew best? Church planners do best where they grew and uh, plant where they grew. And I thought, you know what, uh, I know Detroit. So in 2010, Scott Blanchard started Lake Point Church in the same neighborhood where he grew up. I started working with the people that I knew. This was work all on that. And then it grew very big, very fast. I really had a burden, and I grew up for my city and for my uh, community that I grew up in. And an unlikely church planter with a burden and a love for his hometown is all it took. You gotta learn what the Bible says to love one another. When we left here, I was like, you know, God, this is all on you. And that's uh, what we started with saying, I put the 75. People come to Christ, and uh, not sure where they once would be today. If it wasn't for any other girl, it, it helped me push forward and uh, give me strength, and uh, it's exciting how of that. you to join him. If you'd like to have one, the more the merrier, the price goes down every time. So talk to him. And uh, I think Gwen's going to talk a little bit about the Bible Prophecy Conference and details. And, oh, I was going to tell you, by the way, there'll be a baptism tonight, right? At the beginning of the evening service. I have to tell y'all that back in September when Ramon and I were talking about uh, the date, set the date. We set it early and then we have to go to the church council to ask them if we can do this. And they're always so gracious to let us do this. And right after we kind of decided the, the time, uh, I got a note from Brother David and he said, he asked me if we could make it on this particular weekend, which is the weekend it's going to be. Well, it was exactly the time that Ramon and I had chosen already. So that was a good confirmation for us. But that's what God wanted. 
Well, as I was sitting there this morning listening to the message that Brother David just brought, I know that God knew at the foundation of the world that he was going to be bringing that message this morning and we were going to be having Bible prophecy from him. So, I tell you what, if y'all don't show up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, shame on you. <laughs> we're really excited. I asked for you to pray for the speakers. They're going to be coming from near and far. I know uh, Brother Rosada is going to be back from Israel two days before the Bible Prophecy Conference. So he's going to be gung-ho and going at it, I'm sure. And uh, also, um, the title, The Blood Red Moons, I did not, I had to confess to somebody I'd never heard of that before, although I'd heard he used the signs in the heavens. But then I found out that we've got one scheduled to, to show up in April of this year. So we're seeing it all come to pass in our generation. And I, I pray that y'all will be there. And I ask that your, your prayers for the speakers as they travel, for us as we finalize the final details, excuse me, details on all this. Thank you. As a something before we close, uh, the sound that we've been hearing right before the message or right at the beginning of the message, that is that DVD that we watched uh, during the offering. If you notice at the beginning and the end of each video, we have this sweeping thunderous crash. Uh, well, that same sweeping thunderous crash is on the menus as well. And there's a noise. I really wish they would have done that. I'm going to call the North American Mission Board and let them know they shouldn't do that. <laughs> The last two weeks we've had two DVDs that we show, and we'll have one DVD player back there, and so that, that DVD is always the second one since we showed during the offer at the end of the service. And so we just get to do that. Well, I thought I had it fixed, and uh, obviously it still came through the monitors. Uh, sound men, Liz, I'm sorry that I got upset. I'm very sorry about that. Let's all stand as we sing a uh, final song. And um, thank you. Savior. 